Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL. Today we are diving into the fascinating connection between sleep, yes, sleep and uh, insulin sensitivity, insulin resistance as highlighted in a recent study uh, published in Diabetes Care. Okay, let's start to discuss this interesting recent small randomized clinical trial involving 38 women aged 20 to 75 that revealed, yes, revealed that restricting sleep to around six hours per night led to a notable reduction in insulin sensitivity and increased plasma insulin after six weeks, after six weeks only. As I said, the study involved 38 women, 11 of them were postmenopausal, free of cardiometabolic diseases with actigraphy confirmed habitual total sleep time of seven, nine hours per night. Yes, these women, they were sleeping between seven and nine hours per night before starting the intervention. In this randomized crossover study with two six-week phases, women were assigned to either maintain adequate sleep, yeah, so to sleep seven to nine hours, the normal ones, or experience a reduction of 1.5 hours per night down to 6.2 hours per night measured by actigraphy okay so basically there was a reduction of of 1.5 hours per night of sleep assessments included plasma glucose and insulin levels homa insulin resistant index total area under the curve for glucose and insulin matsuda index uh, and other ones so the results are really intriguing Adjusted linear models showed increased fasting insulin. There was an increase of 6.8 picomolar liter of insulin, fasting insulin, and there was an increase of 0.3 of HOMA insulin resistant index in women with sleep restriction by an average of 1.34 hours per night compared to those with normal sleep. Okay, so there was an increase in insulin and insulin resistance. Uh, the impact of, on HOMA uh, was more important in postmenopausal post women than premenopausal women. And interestingly, a deposited change did not mediate the effects of sleep restriction on glucose metabolism across the entire sample when included as a covariate. In conclusion, this small trial suggests, because it had to be confirmed in a larger trial, that reducing sleep only by 1.5 hours from the 7 to 9 typical hours to 6.2 per night mildly but significantly impairs insulin sensitivity. It does increase insulin, fasting insulin, uh, emphasizing that insufficient sleep is a potential contributor to aging and chronic diseases, given the established link between excess insulin, the activation of the PI3 AKT mTOR pathway, aging, cancer, and chronic diseases, as I already explained in uh, other videos. So there is a strong link. Whenever you activate the insulin igf one mTOR pathway, you are driving aging, cancer, and many other chronic diseases because you are inhibiting autophagy, DNA repair mechanisms, antioxidant pathways, and you are promoting cell proliferation. More cell proliferation, more random mutation, more cancer, more cells in essence. Now, we're going to talk about, I'm going to do a, a special video on sleep and what you can do uh, to sleep better. But, you know, in short, uh, there are few rules that, you know, you can follow to improve your sleep if you have problem with sleep. First of all, maintain a consistent sleep schedule of seven, nine hours nightly. 
So basically go to sleep at the same time, same time, and create a quite cool bedroom environment. If unable to sleep after 20 minutes in bed, uh, stand up and engage in a relaxing, non-stimulating activity, and of course avoid electronic devices. Prioritize healthy bedtime habits such avoiding large meals before going to sleep, caffeine and alcohol. This is bad. Of course, minimize blood-like exposure. You shouldn't, you, you shouldn't watch your iPhone or your iPad at least 30 minutes before going to bed. Uh, there is plenty of data that exercise regularly, preferably in the morning, enhances a deep sleep uh, and overall sleep quality. Stimulating the mind with new tasks, with learning new things has also been shown you know, to, uh, to increase sleep quality. There is growing evidence that using uh, pulses of pink noise uh, can enhance uh, uh, slow wave deep sleep and, and even cognitive function. We are going to talk about this pink noise that is, is basically mirroring the sounds of nature like waterfalls and uh, other, other nature, natural noises. Incorporating meditation and yoga into your routine, especially before bedtime, can significantly improve sleep quality. And, uh, and there are new techniques like uh, transcranial stimulation as a potential method. We're going to talk about it uh, to boost uh, deep sleep and memory. And finally, number 10, melatonin supplementation may be considered only for individuals with melatonin deficiency. In the other people, it doesn't work, especially those over 50 years old based on test results. Uh, this is everything for today. Uh, I'm uh, Luigi Fontana, professor of medicine, the Ullman P, uh, the Leonard P. Ullman Chair, Picasso Chair in Translational Metabolic Health, the scientific director of the Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic, and the director of the Health for Life program at the University of Sydney, and a clinical academic in the Department of Endocrinology in uh, uh, Sydney. This is Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL. Uh, thank you for listening.